This video is about the presser bar from top to bottom and how to remove it and replace it. Originally, the idea for this video story was to remove, clean, and replace the presser bar. As this clip shows, the presser bar and nearly everything else that lives in the nose is gone. The video will end with the image you are looking at. The counterweight is not able to be removed. Let's get started. This is Jeb. I want to thank you for your viewership. Thank you for coming here. I hope that when you do come here, you enjoy your time here and that it is useful to you. I always like to mention learning. I like to think that we're all learners here, regardless of which side of the camera we're on. And last but not least, as always, enjoy, keep safe, have fun. See you right now. What well, you're looking at, Singer Service Manual for the 201 series model of sewing machines and this is the written instructions to remove and replace the presser bar. Here is the following page. It also has all the diagrams for the needle bar as well. That screw that we're looking at right there is the screw we need to undo to allow the presser bar to become free of this. This piece will eventually come right out once the needle bar is removed. And then at the top, up there is the presser bar thumb screw. So I'm going to have to release the presser bar thumb screw after I do that. So these are the two screws. I'm going to undo that one first, and then undo that one, and then take the washer, because there's a washer in there, so be careful when you start pulling this out of here and then the spring comes off and then the bar will come out as well. I'm hoping that will give me enough room that maybe I'm able to get in down here with a pair of pliers or something and undo that set screw on the back of the needle bar clamp. The first goal is to remove the pressure bar. So without further ado, the first thing we need to do is undo the screw here. There, I didn't have to turn too hard to get it to break. I'm going to be very careful with that set screw. And now the next thing I'm going to do is go up top and undo the pressure screw. I'll call it the pressure screw for now. The presser pressure <laughs> screw. And it's coming out of there quite nicely and smoothly. And like I mentioned before, we want to be careful because there is a washer in there. And what can I do? Oh, there goes the washer. Where'd he go? There's the washer there. So I'll put that in there. And then now I can take the spring out, you know. And don't be, don't be worried, this is steel. <laughs> it's really, really tough. Just like the rods underneath, they're steel too. I was once, uh, actually I was working on this machine once. And a uh, fella got all upset that I was wire brushing. Ouch. There. It's off. <laughs> and now I'm able to take the presser bar right out of here. Maybe. Maybe, baby. Well, maybe not. And it is a little bit sticky. It is a little bit sticky. So I'll give a little bit of oil there. And in there, we can see varnish right there. Huh. Wasn't that easy peasy. There it is. There's the presser bar. Cool. Now this should come out. And it did. Now look how much that has opened everything up. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little look and see if there's any way if I can get that set screw that is in behind here. If it will go all the way. You know what? It's loose. The damn thing is loose. Crikey, kids. Okay, that screw right, it is right there. And I want to get it out. So I'm going to put a needle in for, uh, pardon me, a screwdriver in. There, it's loose. But that's the one I needed to loosen in order to adjust this. And you can see how that is moving all like that. 
There, that screw's coming undone now. And it fell down there. So, where's my magic magnet? So that is a set screw from that. So I'm going to put that set screw right back in there now. So I'm Paul kind of holding on to that needle thread guy. And there's the screw. And it goes with that needle bar. Alrighty, what we're going to do is we're going to take these little parts. And I just want to point out to you that if you look at this um, part that came off the presser bar, I did put the set screw back in there. So that set screw should never get lost because it's right where it needs to be. So I'm going to put that in there. And there's the, uh, the top uh, pressure screw, presser, pressure stud. And then the spring. And then, of course, we have the, the bar. Anyway, um, what I have in here is, uh, I don't know if you can read the red uh, scrawling there. It says 100% KK. That means 100% crud cutter. And I'm a big believer in crud cutter. The other thing I'm using is my tools for cleaning here, my cleaning tools. So I have a lot of old brushes and stuff. So there's a couple of old brushes. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the top right off the crud cutter bottle and I'm going to pour some into that white container. And all that stuff is under crud cutter. And then and I'm going to let it soak. If you look in the little white bowl here, and I'm going to aim you up good, you can already, after just like maybe a minute even, and in real time, you can already see some of the water starting to cloud down there. Not water, it's crud cutter. So, but, and if I put the brush in there right now, see, look at that, I didn't even put the brush in, and you can already see how that cloud of uh, dirt and rust, and look at that, it's just, it's literally falling off. So I really have a lot of faith in uh, crud cutter, and, uh, and it's, it's doing a bang up job. Uh, what I am going to do with this is I am going to have to paint it. You know, so I put it in the container here. And uh, I could even take a brush like this, an old utility paintbrush, really give it a good soaking. And you can see already the presser bar is coming out shiny. See? And it's really just coming off quite nicely. Okay, step one was washing these things. Step two is going to be washing them in soap and water. I got soap and water right down here. Put them in there, put them in there, put them in there, and let them sit for a minute. And as long as they're in water like that, then that's soap and water. I still have to go and get a... But the second they come out of the water, they go into the strainer, and then I become the, the hair dryer guy. Right on, man. I put all those parts in there and it's noisy. So that's what's going on now. So the first step was to wash it in crud cutter. Second step is to wash it in soap and water. Third step is going to be to rinse it in the water. And then the fourth step is going to be to hair dry it so it gets really, really dry. And then the fifth step is going to lightly oil the parts that need to be oiled. And once they're oiled, we will also remove the oil that we apply so that when we're finished, um, the parts will be clean and they will only have the very minimum amount of oil or lubricant on them that they require. Um, it's fine when you're cleaning stuff to drown stuff in oil and all that, but you know, the, you know, the experienced restorers, um, the, the experienced sewing machine mechanics, they make sure that a well-oiled machine should actually show no trace of oil. A quick recap, the first step was to wash the parts, bathe the parts in crud cutter. So we did that. The second step is to do this. Wash the parts in soapy water. And then the third step is to rinse them in clear water, plain water, right out of the tap. And then the fourth step is to dry them thoroughly with strainer and the hair dryer. After that, we will, after the, the parts are, are dried, they will be lightly oiled. And then the oil will be uh, wiped off. 
the excess oil will be you know removed by wiping and so that what we'll have is clean parts that have barely a light little film of, of oil to protect against varnish, rust, and other scary things. And you know, they'll be good for, it'll be good for decades. So I will quickly just take these out of the warm soapy water. And there's, I like to brag about the screw, the set screw being in a safe place right where it needs to be. And here I'm just rubbing that spring uh, between my thumb and fingers and I don't really see a whole lot of stuff coming off there and then we've got that the and there's some kind of wick in there yeah and you know it's not very often I get these with with an actual functioning good wick and uh, so I'm just going to set that aside. I'm not going to do the presser bar itself because I want to get these done and we'll just let them rinse out like that. And then I'm going to get ready for a whole pile of noise um, because I'm going to get these rascals, my little friends, out of the, the water. Now I want to make a point here. I want to make it clear that I'm not holding onto the hair dryer that is plugged in while I'm sticking my hand in the water to remove the parts. So, so I just want to get that clear. And um, what I will, will do is I will put the strainer there, I will put the parts there, I will remove the clean warm water, I'll move that over here, and I will pick up the hair dryer. And as soon as you hear about 10 seconds of hair drying. I will stop rec recording and I'll get back to you when I'm done. No flash rust here. And then what I do to test and make sure that they're, uh, they're dry is I put them on the shop towel. These do seem dry to me. That wick in there is wet. That looks real dry in there. One thing I am gonna do right now well, what I am going to do is I'm going to undo the screw, the set screw, and I want to stick a drop of water, not a drop of water, a drop of oil in there. So this is the next step anyway, once it's dry, is to oil it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll put that there. Where's my oil? So there's the screw. Here's the oil, it says to shake it in there. You know what, what the heck, I'll put some in there too. What the heck, put it all on, it's gotta be oiled, right? Sure. And so those are nicely done. And now I'm gonna get a shop towel. Oopsie daisy. Okay, maybe I'll get two shop towels. Move that screwdriver out of there. Good throw, Jeb. And uh, we'll rub some of the oil off. Just the real loose surface oil. And uh, I'm gonna get some Q-tips to go in there and try and soak up a little. Here, we'll wipe this oil off. I love oily. I know they're gonna be good and safe. So that's done. There's more. I'm not going away yet. So, soap and water. Soap and water on the bar. And we're washing off the crud cutter, right? Yes, that's correct. Now I'm gonna take this, dry that soapy water, and then I'm gonna move that. And now I'm drying this soapy water thing. I'm not gonna rinse it in clean water because I'm wiping it. And now I'm gonna get the hair dryer, and I'm gonna make some noise. So the presser bar is nice and dry now. And then I'm gonna give it a quick oiling using the shop towel and my hands, their fingers down there that are covered in oil now. And like that. So, and there. So now we've removed the presser bar and its parts and we've cleaned the presser bar and its parts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that screw right there. And then once that screw is undone, that will release the pressure on this stud, the needle tension device stud. 
and we will be able to remove this. Inside there we can see the needle tension stud pin. This is the thread guide. It is not part of the needle tension device per se. This stays on the machine. This is part of the machine, not the device. But it's a thread guide, not a thread guard. The thread guard is part of the needle, upper needle tension device. So, without further ado, there, so that set screw is set screw is sitting there. There, we have it. So there it is. There's the stud and there's the pin. Good. So we'll dust them off and uh, obviously we're gonna clean the tension device, the upper tension. Now I would like to remove the needle bar entirely. Now I did get this screw loosened and it was a lot easier than I thought actually. And it's very difficult to access and see, but it did come out, but it fell. <laughs> well, I'm really pleased that I finally got all of the presser bar and all of the needle bar and all of its linking components out of the front of the machine and some other small cleaning items. And I'm just going to start cleaning off some of the bar. I did generously let the oil run down the, the cast iron behind the end of the horizontal arm shaft there. And so this YouTube channel is, is part of my, well, it is my apprenticeship for these machines. So it's really nice to take this 201 right down to the, to the bare bones. And even more interesting and fun and exciting will be putting it all back together and setting it as far as the settings are concerned. There's one thing I was looking for right away. So as I was talking about before, I've oiled this generously and I'm just going to start with a toothbrush, see if I can get any of this varnish off just using that. I'll probably, there's some coming off there. So you can see. Right there, all the brown and there, there. So let me get something a little more substantial. I don't know where my smaller plastic brushes are, but that's brass. And you got to be careful with these brass wire brushes because they will scratch the black paint, right? Yeah, they will. So I'm not going to use this for much. That's about the only thing I can, and that up there in the corner, that's about the only things I can, I can use it for. Where I'm at now is I was able to get the presser bar and its associated gear out of the nose. I was also able to remove the needle bar and its associated two or three linkages and they've all been put away uh, in an organized fashion so that when it comes time to put this stuff back together I have an idea what part belongs where or what screw really belongs with what part more, more concisely. But this has all been cleaned. The issue now is that there's a very difficult set screw that is holding this counterweight onto this end of the horizontal arm shaft. And that's the end of the horizontal arm shaft right there. So, and I've tried to get that set screw out 
and so have others because um, you know it, it has been touched before there are are, are marks on the in, on that slot and uh, after trying heating it with a hair dryer banging it oiling it um, banging the area around it and heating the area around it like the counterweight itself to no avail so my strategy now is to go to the other end of the, the sewing machine uh, at the balance wheel end, the hand wheel end. Oh, there goes the inner bar. It finally budged. Oh wow. Right on. Because I had been oiling that and wow. Now will that come off? It will. There's some discoloration there, I don't know if that's rust. There it is. It's out. Wow. Okay, I want you to see this because I started to pivot this. Where's my pointer? And it has come out. I'm able to pull it out. First of all, I put the reverse screw back in. Now I want to pull this out. And it was going to come. Actually, it's coming right there. There we go. There it is. Now I want to be able to get this top part off. So I'm going to have to uh, work on that. The next thing I want to be able to do is pull this out. There's a, uh, an access, there's a little set screw on the side over here. So that's where we're going to go next. We're going to undo the screw. We may see if we can leave it in. Just loosen it. And then this should come out. And this whole piece should come off. And all we'll see is the counterweight and the body. Cool, huh? Absolute, absolute mom. Absolutely. So that is not a screw. There's no slot or any kind of screw head there. I think that's the other end of a pin that is holding that top piece in place. So I have given it a tap with a, um, with a punch and I'm just going to look out around the other side, the other end and see if there's much of a difference there. There wasn't much of a difference using what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the punch and I'm going to punch it from this end and see if this will come this way. If I've got the set screw loosened quite sufficiently, I do believe. It's feeling kind of loose in there. And I don't want to take it out because it's still seated in there. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll give it a gentle tap. Maybe I will use a smaller punch. Finally, after much oil and pushing with a hammer and <laughs> a punch, I have had some results. And I don't know if it, this will come out just like this. I may have to use the punch again on the other end. Let me try with these pliers. There, it's out. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And that can all be clean. That can all be clean. And everything will go in nice. I'm really pleased about this. This is good news indeed. Okay, this is a better brush to use. It's plastic. And it is interesting to use your non-primary hand. Like I'm right-handed, but for, for whatever reason, it, it just works out that when you're making videos, you end up using your left hand as your primary hand, you know, to 
Oh geez, all you can see is my big hand in the way. That's no good. Well, I guess it's an unavoidable issue. A lot of these, this part with the hand in the way will be edited out. But I just wanted to show you some of the, the gunk that is coming off of here. You know, that's a lot of gunk for a little area, really. So this is the first time that I've been able to see this much of the counterweight. And I'm really looking. There's a thread. That's where one screw went. Is that the only screw in here? No, then there's a screw... Right there. Is it still in there? I think it is. If I lined it up that way, yeah. So I probably would have to take that screw off in order to take the counterweight off the horizontal arm shaft, which is that stud right there. Right? Yeah. So, so that's what I'm working on now. What I've done now is I've turned it upside down and uh, there's a whole pile of gunk right up in there. And this is probably an area in most sewing machines that never gets really looked at. Because, well, it's upside down. And we don't normally hold it upside down. So, give it a quick application. And then I'll get one of me, get that toothbrush. Coming off there real quick. Let me see if I can use this cotton swab. Oh yeah, I mean, it's taking the rhyme off. There's still a lot of rhyme there. I don't think that that discoloration, I don't, it may be a bit of rust. It's not real dry rust. I think it's just varnish and discoloration. Maybe a tad of rust. Let me get a more, let me get this brass brush. And just give it a couple of swipes and well here we are at this unexpected finish and I haven't replaced the clean presser bar actually I've emptied everything out of the, the front end here and the only thing that's that's left is the counterweight which I cannot remove because of a stuck set screw so I have to make a decision do I continue and remove this if I want to remove this I have to remove the whole horizontal arm shaft and if I do that then that gets into um, getting into the upright uh, mechanics and really essentially if I'm going to take out the horizontal arm shaft up here I'm going to have to take out all the stuff out of the horizontal, out of the, pardon me, out of the upright, and then all of the rods and stuff underneath. I mean, why not? So I think at this point, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this movie here, and I'm going to finish cleaning the items that I've already removed from here, and I don't know that I'm going to replace them for the next film, but I think that's what I will do. I'd like to get it all put back together, and get it set and timed and working and then if I would like to continue and you know do the the rest of what I just proposed the, the B option I guess uh, going into the upright and then going underneath um, I can do that so I would say for the next film expect that I will have cleaned and then I will be installing 
and timing and setting all that stuff up in the in the in the nose here. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe. It helps. And stay safe. Have fun. And uh, please do.